so Diane, we know that you're married to uh, Pastor Bob Brown. What about Bob? Yes. What about Bob? <laughs> <laughs> and we know that Heather, who's on vacation, is your beautiful Don't daughter-in-law. Yeah. But uh, what we don't know is when did you come to know the Lord? When did you have experience with the Holy Spirit? What's, what's okay. your story? All right. My story is a long story. Because uh, <laughs> I've been around a while. <laughs> uh, no, I'll give you a little bit of background. I told Rich I had something in common with him because I came from a big family. I have seven brothers and two sisters. And I have a twin brother. Okay. So uh, growing up was quite interesting. But as a child, we, we lived in a small town and uh, in walking distance of a church, which I was always drawn to. Where did you grow up? In Windsor. Maine? Windsor, Maine. Okay. Yep, I'm a Mainer. So you're a true Mainer. Woohoo. <laughs> true Mainer. And... Uh, I was always drawn to this church, and I could walk there. And so as a child, um, <clears throat> I'd go every Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday, whenever the doors were open, I felt I needed to be there. And I don't know whether at the time there was uh, something in me that I felt secure, I felt loved, I, I, I just felt the comfort. And I didn't understand a lot then. But through Sunday school, I was saved as a child. And, uh, of course, didn't have a lot of teaching in that. Did, but I think being saved felt like, oh, I belonged. Yeah. And uh, that was very special to me. Uh, okay. And um, going on in my years, as a teenager, I, did, I walked away from the church, did a lot of things. But um, the Lord was always there. He was always drawing me. I knew there was something in me that was, I needed something, you know. And I needed something, at the time, I needed something like a father. Not that my father was bad, but he just didn't know how to be a father. And I was always striving to uh, please and wanted that love, which I never felt as a child. And when I was in the church... I felt it, you know, mm -hmm. and sensed it, and I felt comfortable and safe. But I walked away as a teenager, and um, but I always knew the Lord covered me because there were so many dark places that I went that, I mean, I could have been killed. But anyway, um, I got married very young, my first marriage, and that did not last long. Uh, but through it all, I had a beautiful son, and uh, and still I was striving for something. And I, at the time, I really didn't know what it was. You know, it, it was there in my heart. And uh, we got a divorce, and then a few years later, I, I met Bob, who we're going on forty-five years, and. I gained awesome. a family because he had four children, which are my children. I never considered stepchildren. I hated the word. Mm -hmm. And so we had a big family. So how old were you then? I was early 20s. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was very young. And I took on four, ch four children. But, I mean, it was just natural to me. I grew up in a large family, so right. it was quite natural for me. And, uh, you know, we had our times, we had our dark times, we had our good times, you know, like any blended family. And uh, somewhere around in 1980, because I'm not good at remembering dates and stuff, it's just not me, uh, we both felt a need for recommitting ourselves to the Lord. It was just there, it was just so many things that had happened. And... Uh, so in 1980, uh, we decided to recommit ourselves to the Lord because that need was there for us, for the family, to get back into church because we hadn't been going. We'd sent the kids, and I used to say, just, you know, take them to church, take them to Sunday school. I'll be fine. You know, <laughs> I'm here when they get home. <laughs> and, um, so we did. But anyway, we recommitted our lives, and I think at that point, 
that sense of the love and the need was there. I mean, the Lord really showed me his love that day. It was like, I'm back, you know, and uh, it was very special. And so we continued um, with going to church and taking the kids to church and trying to live the way the Lord wanted us to. And in that time, um, we was at a Bible study. I can't think of her name Uh, at the Ark. Terry knows. Uh, And they asked for do you have your prayer language? And I thought, mm-hmm. You know, I was always nervous and shy. And <laughs> it was like, Bob got it. And I thought, hmm. And they prayed for me, and I thought, hmm, nothing's happened. Nothing's happened, you know. So yeah. they were they were asking you um, if you had been baptized in the Holy Spirit yes. and been able to receive your language right. from the Lord. Yes, and I just sat there, I was like, well, nothing's happened like some people, you know. Yeah. And I think maybe because I was a little scared yeah. and shy. And they said, oh, don't worry because if you're a private person, you'll you'll get it. You know, it will come to you. It may be in a private time. And it did that weekend. I was in my bedroom, and it did come. It was a private time for me. Yeah. But it was special because through all that, you know, and having that special language to the Lord was I don't know, it just overwhelmed me. It was just each time things happened, I was able to speak to the Lord in that language, and he knew. He, and so anyway, the Lord knew all that. He knew all the drawing that I had as a child and growing up, that why I needed all that and why I needed to come back. Uh, because two years later is when the accident happened and my son died. And... Uh, Still get emotional over it. But through all that, the Lord had me covered. He surrounded me with his love because I would never have been able to go through that without him and go through what I went through in that dark time. I wouldn't even be here today because at one time I was thinking of just driving off the road and ending it. But The Lord brought me through. He brought me through so many circumstances. And his love has always been there. He's always been faithful. And uh, there's just so many times. I I could sit here for an hour and tell you, but through all of that and family issues and things, give me a lot of forgiveness at that time. I mean, I think I could write a book on forgiveness and uh, which is very important if anyone goes through anything. The forgiveness sets you free, and it sets the other person free. And uh, I, I learned that through counseling and was able to forgive because it involved our other son. It was very hard. It was a process, but we got through it because the Lord brought us through it. And to this day, we have a wonderful relationship. And... Uh, He knows what I need. So, uh, what else? I don't know what else. (laughs) Well, the, um, I don't know how many of you realize, you know, that uh, some of you have, but that um, there was an accident with a gun and her her son was um, killed. So, it just reminds me when you said, throughout that you couldn't have gotten through that without the holy spirit without mm. god um without each other right um again you know spiritual family and sometimes family um as part of that spiritual family can help you but it r- reminds me of when we lost malachi mm. which it's a different situation but it's Still. grieving it is you have to go through a grieving. family so i can understand yes anyone that's been through it what you're saying Mm -hmm. how and this is what I thought when we went through it because you feel the pain Mm -hmm. of the loss Mm -hmm. in you know on a 10 on a scale of 10 there's just and you feel like some days is this ever going to go away right Um, but you keep reaching for the Lord and and 
he comes in and he ministers to you and he helps you and he strengthens you and he gets you through that situation. Um, so it's not just, oh, you know, we go to church right. and, and it's all Jesus loves us <laughs> and it's all better. It's yeah. a real situation yes, it is. Yes, it is. that you went through. And there's probably strength, uh, wisdom, mm -hmm. comfort that you have because you walk through that right. that you can minister to someone, yeah. to others. I That's mean, right. some, some days we're like, oh, this day is horrible. My life is horrible. <laughs> And, well, what you need right now is to reach out mm -hmm. to somebody like you That's right. and say, can you just pray for me? That's right. Can you just speak into my life? Mm -hmm. I know you went through something, and, right. and you, you have the Lord on you. You, have the, you do. You have the glory of the Lord on you. I think, um, <clears throat> I think the church needs to recognize uh, the wisdom of some of the people that have gone through things mm -hmm. and that have overcome and need to go and get help when they need the help instead of just mm -hmm. bumbling on through. Right, because it is a process. You know, um, uh, I didn't have a spiritual family, so to speak, my own family. Uh, didn't speak to me for five years. Mm. That was very hard. But, I mean us and the Lord, Bob, and that's the only way we got through. It's the only way we got through. And it did come around after five years that they came back, had us, but it's not easy. It's nothing easy about it, and it wasn't just like it happened and, oh, I'm okay. Right. So. I'm wondering if, would you be willing to pray for the rest of us? Because we're all going through stuff. And just pray that um, the Holy Spirit would be able to strengthen us and mm -hmm. we would be able to turn to him in our time of need. Would that, would that be, okay? be okay? Would you guys just receive that from her? All right. Oh, thank you, Father. You are such a loving Father. And you care about each one, each one's situation, Lord, each one's hurt and heart. Lord, and we just ask you to bring strength, encouragement, and most of all, your love in these areas. Father, whatever the situation is, Father, your love will carry us through, no matter what it is. And we just ask for your wisdom, discernment, Father, in these areas. And we just ask that we be united as a body in one to help each other when, when situations come up. And Father, we just give you all the praise and all the glory because you're the only one that deserves it. And we just thank you for it. And I just thank you for this body. I thank you for your love that's been shown to me. And I, and I just praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, I thank you for Diane. I thank you that you open our eyes to the people around us and that we will be able to receive the peace that they have as well as give, that we will be able to see the God that you've put on the inside. Father, I ask that you bless Bob and Diane. I thank you that they have many more years to live, many more uh, blessings to give. In Jesus' name, amen.